I know you're a mom, I'm a mom, I have two daughters, and my oldest daughter, her name is Nola, she's 12, and she's gonna be really happy that I mentioned her name. Um, the other day we were, at, we were eating dinner and, and she just announced to me that she wasn't a minority. And when she, at first when she said that, I was like, oh my God, what have I done wrong? I did the Martin Luther King book, the Julio yeah. Alvarez book. <laughs> she goes to Abuelita's house. What have I done wrong? I'm a failure. And then she said, you know, mommy, uh, I'm an American. And I thought, oh my God, like, it was just, it was like such a, a deep moment. It was like, and I thought, wow, you know, I wish, I wish that, that I felt that way. I wish, then I thought, how, I mean, I hope that she can stay feeling this way for the rest of her life and that it doesn't get taken away from her. Ellis Coast has written a new book, The End of Anger, and it's only out in galleys because I'm, you know, pre-reading it before it comes out. And he writes a lot about how sometimes lens can change, you know, things can change and we all have our lens on, like, I come to the race question, that's the way I was brought up. You know, I come at it a certain way and I'm fairly confident that's how I'm going to go to my grave. And and there'll be so many changes in America that will happen that I'm really not necessarily going to believe or see or I, they're just, but the next generation will come at it with a different lens and they'll feel however they feel about it, whether right or wrong, you know, that'll be their take. And it just, you know, it was a really interesting thing that he writes about it, like, like the lens may stay the same, but things always are changing, always are changing. I think my mom's take on race is very different than, than my take on race. And, and, and I'm sure my daughters, I was telling you this, my daughters who are six and uh, eight and 10 were invited to go to this event at school where children of color would sit around and have like an ice cream social and kind of get to meet each other, the underclassmen and the upperclassmen, you know, sort of create this bond. It's an ice cream social. So my kids were like, hmm, ice cream, hmm. I said, you know, that's a good draw. My daughter said, well, you know, so what does what does it mean to be you know, what's what's of color mean? I said, well, you know, it's like blacks and Latinos, anybody who's not white. They're not gonna let white people go. And I said, well, no, it's for kids of color, so you guys can get to know each other. They're gonna keep white people out. Like she was very. She's like, I just think if white people are gonna be allowed to go, I'm not sure I want to go. It doesn't seem fair. You know? and I was like, wow, this is so the opposite of how you know my take on it. And I couldn't really articulate for her. You know, I, I left it to them. Do whatever you want. My one daughter's just like. So what kind of ice cream? I think, gonna, you know, I think it's a lot of ice cream. Is it only chocolate? Is it only vanilla? You know, I mean, it was so interesting. That's her lens is, you know, well, mom talks about fairness. Isn't that fairness? It's a very different lens than I had. You know, very different lens. But she goes to a school that's more diverse. She lives in a city that's more diverse. Her friends are the range of things. You know, it's being black and white mixed. Mm -hmm. In her school is completely uninteresting. You know, there's one kid who's Vietnamese and Swedish. And they're like, wow, now he is interesting. He's this giant Nordic redhead. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just, it's, it's so different for her, her experience growing my, up. I took my daughter to see Salt, the movie Salt, mm -hmm. and, you know, I, it was fun. I had a good time. And then after the movie was over, she said, Mommy, that movie was, like, so old-fashioned. I'm like, like, what are you talking about? She was like, it was so unrealistic. I'm like, why? Because everything was getting blown up. She said, no, the president was white. Couldn't yeah. they put a Latino, an Asian, a woman, at least a woman? She was like, so, I mean, she was like so, like, well, she said it was like, I, it was unbelievable for me once I saw the president. My daughter, who was six during the inauguration <laughs> of Obama, and I would say to her, she's like, you know, so what are you doing? I said, I'm going to go to the, you know, you know, why is it such a big deal? What's well, the first black president? Really? Yes. The first black president? <laughs> As if I've been lying to her all along. Yes, he's the first. He's the first black. Well, how many women have there been? <laughs> well, none. What? <laughs> Just incensed. You know, and, and now think about the mindset of a kid who comes into the world thinking like, there haven't been, I think my mother's lying to me. I think there have been six other black presidents she's just not telling me. And three women that she's not mentioning. I mean, that's a very different mindset that my daughter comes in with than I come to it. Where, you know, I think for minority journalists, you feel like you've had to fight for every little thing that you've had to get. And it has not been, you know, it's not been easy. I mean, when Obama won, I was like, I felt like like my grandmother. I was like, I never thought I'd live to see the day. I mean, really? I was using I language totally we that I day. never thought I would. I never, oh, God. I mean, it was, it was just, I, I, ne I didn't think. We, I, I, just, I just never thought I'd live to see the day, you know? So it was like, it was, it's so funny. And then she's so 
But I know when Obama, when Obama was elected, I thought, wow, things are going to change. You know, it's going to be really great. Really? Now. Oh, I, I believe. <laughs> I didn't think change that for me. Change here. Thought, I thought. It's, it's, I the thought race, I things with race is worse. I, I, I thought that he could win. Anybody, you know, so much of politics is well, kind of a campaign do you run. So if you could run a smart campaign and you could navigate the race issue or the gender issue, that you could win. Number one, so I was not surprised. I mean, I was surprised that he won, but I, but you know, I, I, I wasn't. It didn't feel to me like, wow, I never thought the day would come. No, if you would have, if you would have been here with me, I would have. <laughs> and then number two, and people who would say, well, the day after he got, I was like, no, it won't. No, it won't. It won't change. The things that are bigger than the presidency are, you know, the numbers that are that underlie some of the crisis we have in the minority communities. You know, like, you really want to see real change? Change some of the prison numbers. Change some of the education numbers. Change some of the economic opportunity numbers. Change some of the wage disparity numbers. Like, then you tell me you do that, I'll be like, now, shit, tomorrow, everything's going to change. You change that? It's, it's, but there's just been so much, so much backlash in, in right, the media, I, and, and, and it's which, empowered people to say things and, and be angry I had a girlfriend towards minorities in ways I, 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 I've not I had a girlfriend seen. in New Orleans who said, she said, you know, the backlash is going to come. She, okay. said, she said that day one, the backlash, and, and I never believed, was with the group that thought that, you know, change has come. Never. Not even for a minute. Well, I, w I was hoping, especially when I saw Aretha Franklin's hat at the inauguration, I thought, ooh. The hat <laughs> sealed the deal for you? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I'm not sure I, what the hat I, said to I, me. I, the hat was great. It was a great hat. It was such a, 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 a I don't know. I mean, for like a minute, I, I just thought, wow, maybe, maybe, just maybe. But now I don't feel that way, so... <laughs> But you know, to me, I think the person, you know, the first, it's never easy for the first, right? It's never easy for the first. It sucks to be the first. But then, you know, someone's the second, and then someone's the fifth, and someone, you know, and then, then at some point, people stop saying, well, you know, he's a Catholic. <laughs> and they just doesn't matter. I and mean, I, I think literally, I think we can get there. I genuinely believe that.